and Mickey. Nice and cosy, old boy. Oh, Let's see what you got hiding here. Take it! 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 Yeah, but Tom, you've got to eat something. Yeah, all right, talk to you later. Are you okay? Yeah, it's just Tommy worries. Me and Annie's taking time to settle in. Yeah, give him my number, I'll sort her out. How long had it been there? I can't say. More than a few months, picked clean. Peachy? Male. Looks like he's had a blow to the head and he was weighted down with stones. Any ID? There's a hip flask in the remains of a pocket, a penknife as well. We'll get a thorough look when we get him back. Post-mortem? Report? As soon as I can, if not sooner. You're the best, I always say that. She does? I do. Mm. Yeah. You like fishing? I like fish. You like food? Morning, everyone. Morning, boss. What we have is an antique pewter hip flask engraved with the name Paul Cochrane, retrieved from this morning's body. Any news on that name, Lisa? Still checking on missing Paul Cochrane's. That lake's a big favourite with the fishermen. Yeah, which is why I want checks done on angling clubs, societies, boat hire, guest houses. The hip flask, we did an online search of dealers. There's a couple of shops in the Greater Manchester area that sell them, and one of them does their own engraving. Try and get some details on Paul Cochrane. Now, this might be him, or he might know who this is. Let's go fishing. Good chappers. Not bad. Nice no, gaff. Yeah. You do the honest. For uh, Mr. Paul Cochran. I'm a neighbour. I look after the place while he's away. Is there something wrong? You haven't got a key, have you? <laughs> when did he last see him? Well, it's a few months ago now. Do you know where he went? He's in uh, Priestley House again. Oh, the rehab place. Hmm. Is there a Mrs. Cochran about? No, they split up. It is a real shame, all this, you know. I mean, he was a top architect. He had everything going for him. He's won awards, commissions. But it's drugs, isn't it? You take a man down. Hmm. 
Depressed fracture to the skull consistent with being caused by a blunt instrument. Size, shape? Something quite wide, six inches or more. It must have been some whack. It was. And water resistance means the blow probably occurred before he went into the lake. Teeth are damaged, but they weren't looked after anyway. Fractured ulna would suggest some sort of struggle. DNA. Matches one Michael Day. He'd be 28 if he'd lived. Michael Mickey Day, man of many convictions. Last one when? Two years ago. Yeah, chap. Good. Go and talk to him and see what he's got to say. The dead man was Mickey Day. We're on our way to his last known address now. Paul Cochran is alive and unwell and living at Priestley House. He's an architect. But he didn't build these. So sorry, Mrs. Day. We looked everywhere. We didn't know what had happened. He went out and never came back. We? Me and Kevy's best mate. But Mickey had just vanished. Kev who? Robertson. You lot did nothing. We reported it and we didn't get any help. Cos he wasn't good enough. They were my son. Did somebody kill him? We are treating it as a suspicious death. Where will we find Kev? Mrs. Day. Hang on. So Kevin Robertson is living with Mickey Day's mother. That's right. Very daytime telly. <laughs> what about Robertson and Day? Late night telly. Crimes of robbery, violence, drugs, money lending. Mickey Day went missing. We lost half his other time. Still at a party though. Hello, hello, hello. I reported him missing because he was missing. End of. Start off, Kev. Do you know what happened to him? No. I was due to meet him at Kemi's Corner, but he never turned up. What day was that? I reported it. And Piggy out there will know. Who'd want to hurt him? He would be here all day. <laughs> people we crossed. Thing is, Kev, you cross people together. Always together. Did everything together, like that. Mates. Yet he's dead. And you're not. Strange that, isn't it? Says you. Did you kill him, Kev? No. Don't seem very upset that your so-called best mate died in the lake. He was my best mate. And your girlfriend's son? We didn't go out when Mickey was here. Life has its compensations, then. <laughs> Some of the patients here in Priestley House are self-referrals. Paul Cochran is one of them. He's been in here a number of times. Gets to the stage where he can't look after himself and things get out of hand and next time he'll probably be sectioned. His tendencies are psychotic, paranoid, delusional, and he can lash out. And so if it was your epitaph, what would you like to see? Do you know a man called Mickey? Or Michael Day? No. Are you sure about that? Well, why? What we're trying to find out, Mr Cochrane, is how a hip flask with your name on it came to be in the possession of Mickey Day, whose body has been fished from the bottom of Blackshaw Lake. No, I don't know. This is your hip flask, because you got it engraved at the angling shop. We checked. I was robbed for... Well, when? I don't know when. Where? Well, it was dark. Oh, funny, man. What was taken? Everything was... <laughs> tell them, and I tell them, but they won't listen to me. What about Mr Cochrane? You, know, you, you fish and you fish and you, and you try to get an answer and... But you know, they're, they're here. They're waiting. Who are? You, you, you wouldn't know, would you, in your safe job? <laughs> Do you like Taj Mahal? The blues man? Bet you're going fishing 
All of us are there. <laughs> there. I was happy then. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Cochran, thank you so much for coming in. Do not step through to my office? Tell me. We're not divorced. We've been living apart for over a year now. Is he all right? What kind of state is he in? It would seem that he has the potential for violence. Was he ever violent with you? No. He had a temper, but he never hit me. Do you mind me asking, why do you live apart? Dope. He always smoked, but um, there was a moment where he just seemed to fall into it and lose himself, like a drowning man. When was that? About two years ago. His hip flask was found in the pocket of a dead man, Mrs Cochran. I need to know everything I can about your husband. Was he ever up at Blackshaw Lake? Oh, they had this club. They used to go fishing all over. There was a... A group of them from university days. Maybe they fished there. Do you remember any names? Uh, Paul, uh, Vince Hollingsworth, Gavin Busby, he's got Maison Restaurant. And there was James Lutton as well. Was? He died. It was a bit of a shock. What happened? Oh, it was an accident. He died in the bath. He, uh, he drunk too much and drowned. His boyfriend found him. Sarah, say Mrs. Cochran down, please. Thank you so much for coming in. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a dead man. Mickey Day. Small time criminal. And we have a hip flask belonging to Paul Cochran in his pocket. Now, Cochran's marriage hit the rocks when he started using marijuana heavily two years ago. Mickey Day went missing two years ago. Well, Cochran is an egg case. And we got really violent when we started on American he could kill. And he didn't answer any questions. Apart from saying he was robbed. Then there's James Lutton, another of Cochrane's fishing group. Got drunk, drowned in the bath. Now, according to Anne Cochrane, he was gay, had a drink problem. But he'd come out the closet, turned his life around, stopped drinking, then this. Fell off the wagon and into the bath. Any injuries? Uh, we're just finding out, Lisa. Like you said, accidental death. I requested a copy of the coroner's report. I got a date, though, July 13th last year. Sure. Yeah. That's exactly a year. So when Mickey Day went missing. Why aren't you eating, though? That's the question. I'm not hungry. Little man, I do my best for you. I'm not a little man. OK, OK. Dad. Oh, not again. <laughs> The chef's not making French toast. It's Polish toast. What's that? Toast made by a Pole. <laughs> Morning. Morning. I think Richard. Oh, Richard, this is Arthur. Arthur, Richard. Dobry, good morning. Welcome to my kitchen. Tea, fruit juice, coffee. Ah, uh, fine, thanks. Oh! <laughs> yeah, panic, we don't panic. It's under control. Just like Titanic. Hey, 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 hey. I wish you would tell me what's the matter. I'm not hungry. Bye, Mum. Fixed it. Do you see what I mean? You have a chat with him in the car. There's definitely something going on. I'll try. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye, bye darling. Bye. Bye, bye, Arthur. <laughs> you didn't tell me your nanny was a man. Yeah. Equal opportunities imply me. Pete, you okay about Arthur? Yes, yeah, fine. Good. You? I hired him. You got a problem with it? No. It's just a bit. What? Well, why would a bloke want a job like that? Why would I want to do a job like this? Welcome to the twenty-first century.
James Lutton and Mickey Day. Both men connected to Paul Cochrane. Both drowned on the same day, a year apart. Both with a crack on the head. Now, according to the report on Lawton's death, he had a bruise on his temple, but they figured that was him falling over before he got into the bath. Figured? Yeah, blood alcohol count was huge, enough to kill a horse. Nice one. And uh, a neighbour of Lawton said he heard raised voices and a car driving off, but he couldn't be sure. Did they ever trace the car? No. You think Cochrane turned up, got him drunk, drowned him in the bath? It's possible. Why? I don't know, maybe... maybe Lutton saw Cochran kill Mickey Day. Yeah, but why do it a year later? Well, some sort of anniversary. Diane, can you get us a warrant for the Cochran house? Thanks. Oh, I don't get one. You and Butcher's going to see Busby. One day it might be. Then you'd be in trouble. Diaries. Visit JL. JL. James Lutton. But not on the night he was killed. You surprise me. When Mickey Day went missing, look, pages have been ripped out. Mm. This. D Day. Day Day? Could be. There's some connection between Day and Cochrane. Can't believe that Robertson doesn't know what that is. Don't you want to help us find out who did this? It's convenient. Mickey out of the way now. He's shacking up with his mum. Oh, shut it. Mickey wouldn't have liked that. You and his mum going at it. But you know nothing about it, mate. My eyes tell me everything. You know nothing about it! I love her. Well, prove it, Gav. Tell us what happened to her son. I don't know. But you know something about what was happening at the lake? If I tell you things about the past, will they be left in the past? I need to know what happened. We used to rob people up at the lake, guys who was fishing. <laughs> used to have a laugh, me and Mickey. What kind of a laugh? Giving him a fright. Pissing on him in the sleeping bags. Hilarious. <laughs> Is this the one? Have you seen the price of that? I could eat for a week on that. You couldn't. Good afternoon. Can I help you? We're looking for Mr. Gavin Busby. What's it about? Police business. Play cards right. Might get a doggy bag. You know the way you make jokes about my eating the whole time? Yeah. Sometimes you cross the line. What? Your waistline? Not joking, are you? We'd like to come this way, please. Oh, she takes one good look at him, she says. Give it time. <laughs> Gavin Bosby. I'm Detective Sergeant Sharp. This is Detective Sergeant Butchers. Is there a, somewhere we can have a word in private? It's all right. I'm amongst friends, including my lawyer, Lawrence Farron. Have a seat. Paul Cochran, James Lutton, Mickey Day. Now, those names mean anything to you. Lost me on the last one. Mickey Day was found dead at the bottom of Blackshaw Lake where you and your pals went fishing. He had Paul Cochran's hip flask in his pocket. James Lutton died exactly a year after Mickey Day went missing. How can I help? 
We wondered if you could link all three. James, Paul and Vince Hollingsworth were part of a fishing group we had. Started at university, did it for years. And then he stopped. When I was a child, I thought like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. You outgrow people as you become older. You must know that. No. Educate me. Paul designed this place. And it's the best. He was at his peak. But he was a dreamer. Always full of grand plans and big schemes. He didn't always pull them off, and it hit him hard. Me, I miss the practicality. I'm a doer. Which is why I am where I am. And where is that, Mr. Busby? Top end of my profession. Paul wasn't a practical person. Isn't. He's still alive, Mr. Busby. In name only. And the others? When the fishing club stopped, Vince and I drifted apart. I meant to stay in touch, but never did. I read about James's death in the paper. Very sad. And you don't know Mickey Day or Kevin Robertson? No. OK. Thanks very much, Mr. Busby. Stay for lunch. It's on the house. I'm celebrating an award. Cook in the books, is it? <laughs> very good, Sergeant. Oh, I hate this place. It's made of shivers. Hello. Yeah, Pete, I can talk. Yeah. What happened? Is he all right? Why didn't you tell me? Yeah, OK, OK. What did the head teacher say? I wish you'd told me before. Yeah, see you later. Bye. Who met a nose? What does he know? He's all seeing and all knowing. And he knows what happened. Sorry. Two policemen, Paul. Detective Chief Inspector Dean Lewis, this is D.R. Richard Main. Different from the other two. Yeah. You're one of each. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I think you're aware. Well, that's a big thing. Oh, uh, why we want to talk to you. We know that two men, one of them Mickey Day, used to rob campers up at the lake. They stole from me as I slept. Did you go looking for them after they robbed you? Well, I never saw them again. It was dark, so... Why did you rip the pages covering Mickey Day's death from your diary? Did I? Well, the pages were gone. Well, well, I didn't rip them. I want to talk to you about James Lutton. James? Yeah, you kept up with him until shortly before he died. It was in your diaries. There are lots of newspaper articles and clippings about James Lutton at your house, Mr Cochrane. James is my friend. How good a friend? Well, a friend friend? What do you mean? Well, you and he, uh... A pair? A couple? No! No! According to your diary, the last time you saw him was the day before he died. What did you talk about? Oh, just... Uh, old times and fishing, music, things. What's D-Day, Mr Cochran? What? In your diary, there's lots of references to D-Day. What is that? Oh. <laughs> just dope days. Where do you buy drugs from, Cochran? Is it Kevin Robertson? Who? You know when he said this place gives me the shivers? It seemed heartfelt. It was. I won't ask. When Wendy and I split up, there was a period where I didn't manage. It was like walking through treacle. I hated feeling that weak. And you've no sympathy with Cochrane? Oh, no. He's a dopehead. He makes a choice. The summer that was camouflage. We should bring him in. I haven't got enough on him. I think we do. He just turns it on whenever the questions get difficult. Very convenient. Sorry if I offended you. It's okay. No, no, it's, it's, it's not okay. Not if it bothers you. 
Doesn't bother me all the time. Just sometimes, when the cracks keep coming, it really gets to me, Tony. Right. Well, anything I can do to make it up to you? You can buy me a pork pie. didn't say anything. Didn't want to. He was just trying to sort it himself. Bullies rely on that. People keeping quiet. If you speak... Yeah, thank you, Tina. I don't think we need an audience for this. It's OK. We're all trying to help. So what are we going to do about it then, Tom, eh? I don't know. Head teacher wants to talk to us at five tomorrow. Right. Do these boys who have been bullying you, taking your money, do I know them? No. OK. Tomorrow it is, then. Am I? Cochrane's dead. <laughs> Took a lot of these, apparently. I'm drowned. hidden them when he came in. Do you not search your patients, Mr Hamill? They tend to be addicts. They're furtive and good at concealment. Who found him? One of our patients went in to use the bathroom and... It wasn't locked? Uh, no. Oh, oh yes. I know. Quicker than that. I'm working on it. Thank you. Richard wants to know everyone's movements in the building this evening. Have you got a logging in, logging out system? It's a locked building. CCTV outside? Yeah. Good. Thanks very much for your help. Listen, until we've got a PO, I'm going to treat this as a suspicious death. Could be suicide. Oh. Guilt, pressure. I've got a bit too much for him. <laughs> it was us putting pressure on him. If he was Mickey Day's killer, the pressure would have been on him anyway, especially when the body turned up. Should have taken him in. No, I think you were right. We didn't have enough on him. He might still be alive. Oh, I saw him yesterday after your friends were here. <laughs> he was very agitated. Oh, angry. <laughs> Withdrawn and in on himself. What exactly is it you do with patients, Mr. Barr? I counsel them. I bring them to an understanding of their darkness and try and help them ease their way back into a normal life. And how long have you worked here? Um, it's uh, three months on and off. I'm employed elsewhere doing the same work. Okay, and where were you last night? Uh, at home. At home. And what time did you leave Priestley House yesterday evening? Uh, seven o'clock. I signed out at the desk. Did uh, Mr Cochrane discuss the police question them at all? Oh, no. No, he says heavily into dope. He can be very far away. Oh, he is now. <laughs> what, what do you think it was got him into dope in the first place? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, he wouldn't say. Well, that's a bit odd, isn't it? I, when you're trying to get to the root of it. He told me that when his marriage fell apart, dope was something that flew him through the day with no pain. But it destroyed everything he had. It was a tragedy. Such a talented man. OK, well, uh, thanks very much, Mr. Oh. <laughs> um, what are those? 
Oh, they're, they're, they're taped counselling sessions. Mr Cochrane in any of them? Yes, he's... You don't mind if I... Well, I... Come on, you'll get him back. Well... <laughs> Oh, it's a pleasure. Hey, look who came visiting yesterday. Mr. Busby. Well, well, well. The water from the bath limits what we can expect from DNA evidence, but I did retrieve tissue from under the fingernails. Could it be from an attacker? Possibly. He drowned. Approximate time of death, 10.30 p.m. He had enough of the sedative flunitrazepam in his system to render himself comatose. But there is bruising under the jaw, consistent with fingers. Someone could have drugged him? Could have. And there are these scratches on the upper arm, as if someone's held him and they struggled. And this, a bruise on the temple, most likely caused by someone striking his head against the side of the bath. That's like James Lutton's death. It's not like. It's the same. Sorry, boss, where are you? Morning, everyone. You all have heard Paul Cochrane has been found dead. His death bears a strong similarity to that of James Lutton, so we are reopening the investigation into Lutton's death. Three victims, all attacked, all drowned. Mickey Day on the 13th of July, 2004. James Lutton, 13th of July, 2005. And Paul Cochran, who died last night. Estimated time of death about 10.30 p.m. He may have scratched his attacker. We found skin under his fingernails, but we're waiting for DNA on that. Shap. Butchers, can you find out everything you can on staff, patients currently live and work in that priestly house, and anyone who visited yesterday, relatives or deliveries? Well, Gavin Busby, for one, uh, he was there for a couple of hours. Yeah, he, he signed in as seeing Cochrane and left around six. It doesn't fit our time frame, but let's bring him in anyway, see what they talked about. Oh, great, another round with Mr Practicality. He didn't want to win, then. Right, we're still looking for the last member of our gang, Vince Hollingsworth. He worked at Citibank, then he just left suddenly. No one could make contact with him. When? Days after London's death. What, my family? He's got an elderly mother in Leeds, but she's in a home, Alzheimer's. Missing persons have a trace on him, but he's long gone. Is he another victim? You got a picture? I've got an old group shot from the bank. It's a golf outing. Good, OK, that brings us on to our double act, Mickey Day and Kevin Robertson. Now, they attack our gang of four, Cochrane, Lutton, Busby and Hollingsworth. Now, good girl, do our fishing club then take revenge on Mickey Day for that attack? Do they hit him, drown him and weigh his body down? Now Robertson's wreaking revenge. Two down, two to go. Who's next? Busby, Hollingsworth. Or... Mickey Day and Kevin Robertson fall out over a robbery or a drug deal. Or Kevin's interest in Mickey's mother. Well, if that's the case, maybe Robertson killed Day. Maybe someone from the fishing club saw him do it. Now he's bumping them off. Yeah, why not just report it at the time, what they got to lose? OK, other angles? Drugs. Cochrane's a user. Robertson's a dealer. Could be a connection there. Who killed Paul Cochrane? Who had the opportunity? OK, let's get Robertson and Busby back in, see what they've got to say now. You shower of wankers! A shower! I was in the angle club last night and told you I'd been victimised here. I've got your number and I've got your number. Can you account for your movements yesterday evening? I was in my restaurant all night last night. About 60 people can testify to that. Why did you go and see Cochrane yesterday? <sighs> my conscience was pricked talking to you two. Paul and I were best friends once, and I realised I'd let him down. Strange coincidence, then, isn't it? What? Well, you go and see him one minute, and then he's dead. Dead? 
When? Last night. He was doped. He died in a bath. He was murdered. Did you bring him drugs yesterday? No. First James, then Paul. And Mickey Day. Now, you're checked in at Braceley House at 4pm yesterday and not out again until 6pm. That's a long time. A lot of talking. What did you talk about? How oh, my lawyer here? Even if Robertson's alibi stacks up, we know he'll have coerced people into vouching for him. I have to disprove it. Get Lisa up there, talk to everyone at the Angle Club. Well? Yeah, Busby's got an alibi for last night, but he's not saying more till he's got his brief with him. And he seemed genuinely shot by Cochrane's death. Moon man watching the deep, dark water of the bleak, black down. Flickering, freezing, a face to face. Why do you smoke dope so much, Paul? Can I take you back to when you first started? I lit a match and the sun smiled. You can never go back. Shap, the tapes you brought in from Priestley House, they're all dated up until the day before yesterday. And yet, when you went to see him yesterday, he was in a counselling session. Could you get a hold of that tape from Adrian Hamill, please, and check access to the building? John? Busby's lawyer's here, boss. Tell us what happened at the campsite. We were a group of close friends. We went fishing together. Our time was great. It meant everything to us. Touchstone. Buddies. Good guys. The night we were attacked changed everything. Why? One of them had a knife. They kept laughing. The other one pissed on Vince. Golden showers, he called it. Brave little scum. And what did you do? Nothing. Nothing? Big strong man like you. Practical man. Used to taking a lead. Meaning? I've been around groups of men all my life. I've seen it happen. Someone gets an idea to do something, and well, maybe you're a member of the gang that's not really up for doing it. But they'll go along with it because they want to be a part of the gang. A part of the group. I think you influenced everyone to follow your lead in tracking down because your attackers and teaching this. them a lesson. You found Mickey Day, and the lesson went too far and he died. We did nothing, and that's the problem. It festered. We could have taken them. I could have taken them alone. But we're not thugs or scum like them. Three men are dead, Mr. Busby. And two of them were my best friends. I never saw these men again after they robbed us. And that's your story? No. It's the truth. Keep going. To me, keep going. Right. You sure the cameras cover the whole building? Yes. And there's no entrance around there, so... Well, there, there used to be an old door. Nobody uses it now. Right. Keep going round till you get to a door. That's it. Left. No. Left. Get up here. I can't see you. Try it. It's open, isn't it? Outside the bathroom where they found Cochrane. He's just walked through the door that no one uses. What's all this? I thought you'd tell me this place was secure. Can you hold the fort for an hour? I've got to go to Tom's school. Everything all right? I don't know yet. Firstly, I want to apologise for this happening at my school. I am sorry, Tom, that you've been subjected to behaviour like this over the past week. I am glad we were able to catch the culprits and act on it. I caught them. Yes, and I am grateful for that, Mr Lewis. The two boys concerned are going to apologise to Tom if he will accept their apology. Will they mean it? I think they have begun to face the consequences of their actions. What are the sanctions? The boys will be detained after school. They will attend a course where we will underpin the basics which we try to instil here. The behaviour which impacts badly on other students. off in a few classes. And a sincere apology to Tom. What do you think, Tom? Don't know. It won't happen again, Tom. You can be sure of that. See you later. Chat about it then, yeah? I love you. You know, one time I'd like to get my hands on bullies like that. 
Give them a good belting. That's ridiculous. I know. But I feel good doing it. Bullied. No. I was deputy leader of the gang. Deputy leader? Well, I had a pecking order. Like us. You're the leader, then there's me. You don't pick on me. Much. Mm. Butchers gets picked on. But he kind of likes it. Makes him feel like he's a member of the gang, you know? Men, hey. It's better than talking about makeup and emotions. I hit the ball. <laughs> oh, oh, one nil to the bullies. Come on. Come on, stand up for yourself. <laughs> okay, okay. It's okay. I think we can do something good. I must plan how to get on those counselling tapes. Why? You think he's got something to hide? Nah, it says something about medical ethics, but I think he's just been an awkward sod. What's the progress on the uh, background check staff at Priestley House? Health service. I reckon they're still using carrier pigeons. Push them. Kevin Robertson lied about his alibi last night. He was seen getting a taxi into town. And we now know he could have gotten to Priestley House. We'll chase that taxi, see where it dropped him off. Let's go and see why he's giving us the run around. this where's Kev he's gone Kevin Robertson yeah I want to watch put out from the airports railways bus stations yeah he's IC one five foot eight dark brown hair got a history of drug use and violent offenses yeah that's it yeah, that's what okay. happened he came home scared said you were trying to fit him up for Mickey's murder. And <laughs> he never did that. He'd never do that. No, not a violent man. He's not. I tried to stop him taking money and he wasn't having it. He wanted money because he was going. It's all I have. I didn't want him to go. Paul Cochran was murdered last night. Do you know that name? Kev's our prime suspect. He gave us an alibi, but it wasn't true. <sighs> it wasn't him. Well, you could say that, but it doesn't alter the facts. He was scoring last night. He had a big delivery to get. It's his money for next month. We are meeting his man in town. Who? I think he tells me. What time was this? He took out a card and cleaned out the account in town. If you lot had been good at your jobs, none of this would have happened. You should have caught whoever killed my son. DNA back on the skin under Paul Cochran's fingernails. Is it Robertson? No match on a day, base. Right, we're up. Let's go. Bye bye. 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 DNA evidence rules Robertson out of the murder of Paul Cochran. So why is he run, boss? Well, he's still got plenty of motive for the murder of Mickey Day. Cochran and Lutton's murders bear distinct similarities, but we keep them separate from the murder of Mickey Day. Mickey Day was killed in a public space, drowned after a blow to the head. Cochran and Lutton were drowned in the bath. Cochran drugged, Lutton drunk. The 
fourth member of our fishing group, Prince Hollingsworth, is still missing. I found out he was getting treatment for stomach cancer when he disappeared. He missed an appointment. It was a week after Lutton died, and he never turned up again. Why would you want to do that? Unless it wasn't by choice. Is this still the only photo we've got of him? I asked West Yorkshire Police to check with his mother. They're sending some over, but only childhood pictures, nothing more recent. Who wants these men dead? Lots of questions. We need some answers. Fantastic. Cheers. Fantastic. I know about the drug deal, Kev. But we want to know about Mickey Day. Why did you kill him, Kev? Was it for Lindy? She's his mum! God, she thinks about him every single day. She don't give a shit about us, do you? He was my best mate. I don't know what happened to him. So why did you run? Because some guy threatened me. What guy? I don't know him. God, you don't know much, do you, Kev? Life must be one big struggle. He followed me in his car. He said he was going to hunt me down and he was going to have me. He said he knew where I lived and he wasn't going to stop until I stopped breathing. Describe him. Big black guy. Driving a 4x4. Four four. You threatened Kevin Robertson last night. Spoke to him, yes. You threatened him, why? My client hasn't admitted to threatening anyone. I run a successful restaurant. People know me. Scum like him, and that's all he is, talking to you, digging up the past. It's not good for my business or for my life. You don't think it's him been killing your friends? I just wanted to remind him of what he did. Mickey Day didn't deserve to die. He had family, his mother. She thought the world of him. Maybe she didn't see what he was like. What was he like? <sighs> we were out in the water. It was beautiful. We hear a shout, and it's one of the guys who attacked us. He's bladdered, he's standing on the edge of the water and he's shouting at us. Wankers! Wankers! I'm the man that robbed you. And you just sailed away smiling, eh? I'd like to have a conversation with my client. And I'd like the truth now. It's okay, Lawrence. I was all for going ashore and having him. But the others said, let him be. Ignore him. He comes into the water and he swims towards us, shouting. He arrives at the side of the boat. Tries to climb in, I push him out. Tries again, and Paul grabs him. But this guy pulls him into the water. They both go under, and we all try to see what's happened. They come up again, and Paul's struggling. James takes his oar and smashes it down on top of him, hits his head. They go down one final time. Only Paul comes up. We didn't know what to do. He sat there for ages, and then his body comes up again, bobbing on the surface. So we decided to weigh him down the stones and leave him there. We? Who suggested it? I don't remember. I was all confused. But I didn't hit him over the head with an oar. I didn't touch him. It's very convenient. I admit that I was there. What more do you want? Tell me about Vincent Hollingsworth. Vince was the baby of the group. He was always picked on. Always the butt of jokes. He wouldn't have a thing. Anonymous, really. You seen him recently? No. Paul said he'd seen him at Priestley House, but... By the end, Paul was seeing a lot of things that just weren't there. One day, Hollingsworth walks out of his life and cancer treatment. Then Cochrane tells Busby that Hollingsworth has been to okay. visit him. Yeah, but Cochrane was away with the fairies and Busby's full of bullshit. Still hasn't signed his statement. The brief's just applied for bail. Just keep on at him. 
Look, there's no record of Hollingsworth ever visiting Priestley House. Could have used the other entrance. Busby claims that Lutton killed Day to save Cochrane's life. Then they all collude in hiding the murder. So what happens next? I mean, no thanks. Peck in order of gangs. I'm Busby. If you ask me, Busby's the one who did it. But he's fine with it. Strong sense of himself and he's prepared to use it. Does what he needs to do. Carries on with his life. And we're all going to do that, aren't we? OK, you be Lutton. Lutton? Uh, OK. Uh, not very good at keeping secrets. Drank heavily when I was in the closet. When I was in the closet. Shut it. Now the pressure's on again. Um, hit the bottle. Shappers, you're Cochrane. Well, I turn into a nutter. Oh, all right, um, can't handle it. Does me head in, big time. Hollingsworth? I want to be in. Why do I have to be in? Exactly. No one wants to be the weakest. No one wants to be the whipping boy. Well, it gets pissed on all the time. They're the ones who harbour grudges. Just nod, OK? That's that. That little kid? Is that kid? Oh. Oh. Big guy now, huh? You want to fight him now? He's got help. Do you? Ah. OK, enough. Tom, enough. If you touch him again, it won't be him coming after you, it'll be me. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. My family, friends and colleagues, but I was actually born in Limerick, which is why I am plagued by a need to rhyme all the time, which is fine for a while, crocodile. <laughs> I don't know why they just didn't go to the police. Fear of losing everything, going to jail. At first I thought the dope was just a habit that grew into an addiction. But he became secretive and before that he couldn't keep a secret for five minutes. We're also looking into the circumstances around James Lutton's death, so anything you can tell us about the fishing group would be a help. OK, well, I liked James. He was a kind man. I didn't know Vince much. Quiet. Invisible, Paul used to say. But then no-one could get a word in when Paul and Gavin were around. And Gavin? Oh, Mr Macho. He held the group together. Always the organiser. And then the fishing trips just stopped. Get on with it! I am getting on with it. Oh, trouble and strife. Sweet love of my life. There was no person at Dover who rushed through a field of blue clover, but some very large bee stung his nose and his knees, so his days as a rover were over. <laughs> Paul was a lovely man, you know, and for years we were very happy. And then he just... he just lost his smile. You, fighting, it says here. They started it, so we got them back. Doesn't make it right. That makes you as bad as them. They were bigger than me. Yeah, bigger than you, smaller than Arta. It's all over now, so what's the big problem? Yes, Michael, it was all over, so why start it up again? What do you think you were doing? Standing up for myself. Yeah, by using your fist? Yeah. It's not how you've been brought up, Tom. It's how it is, though. It's OK, I go now. It's no problem. You understand why you have to go? Why I find your behaviour unacceptable? I understand. But I don't agree. Does my presence trouble you? 
never meant harm. M Moon Man knows. Moon Man's invisible. Who's Moon Man? Did you ever have a nickname? Not that I'd tell you. Why? You'd use it against me. Why would I do that? There was a boy in our class who was scared of water. They called him Flipper. It's a pack thing. Show him your weakness and you're done. What does Moon Man know? Watching. Boss. Yeah. I found something on the Priestly House records. Bar's counselling credentials. They're not real, they're false. When will it be? To Paul Cochrane. He used to call Hollingsworth invisible, according to Anne Cochrane. Let's wind it back. Let's have a look at him. Why are you here? Does my presence trouble you? Is he talking about Hollingsworth? M Moon Man knows. Moon Man's Or bar, or...? Not anymore. Watching, mm. waiting. God, Richard. <laughs> You don't think that Barr and Hollingsworth could be the same person, do you? Well, look, he's much older than the rest of the fishing Yeah, group. I know, I know, but he's had cancer. I mean, that can age you. Yeah, but, boss, look, in, in this photograph, Hollingsworth's face is, is much rounder. Yeah, I know, I know, but he's had cancer. Barr looked in pain when he handed me the tapes. Could have been the cancer. He's Moon Man. Hollingsworth disappeared very shortly after Lutton's death. I've got a job at Priestley House under false credentials. To kill Cochrane. We got Bar's address. He's never been here. I think you're right. I think we've got our man. He killed Lutton and Cochrane. Let's get hold of Busby. He might be next. Hello, Gavin. Long time no see. Vince? <laughs> hey, Moon Man. Oh. You changed. Oh. So what are you doing here? I know kill Paul and James. I've lost witness saw Busby leaving in his four before with another man. Description matched that of Barb Hollingsworth. So we're heading on off towards Hampton Hill. The lake. The lake, Richard. Taken him to where it all happened. He'd have killed Cochrane on the anniversary, but Mickey Day turned up. Then we come calling. Yeah, he's playing with Cochrane and enjoying it. God, he must have been terrified. Even in the state he was in, he must have known what was going to happen. That's what Busby does. Where's this evidence and what is it? Well, you'll see. You're not wanking here about, are you, wanker? <laughs> you think you're a funny man. It doesn't hurt me anymore. Never hurt you. Always a funny man. Ripping your way into me. <laughs> the butt of all your jokes. <laughs> Just 
Cooper spotted the vehicle. It's through there. Too late. We've got them. They are on the jetty. Come there. You never thought again about what happened on that trip, did you? I, I did. You had three years back. Oh, the horse. Yeah, I did. Liar. They pissed on me, but that was what it was like for me all the time with you. Another dose will kill him. Just, just stay back. It's all over, Vincent. Tell them, my pal Gav. Go on, tell them. <laughs> you used to all have a laugh. We thought you were part of it. <laughs> I was the joke. You just never noticed. No, no. You're not a joke. <laughs> You need help, that's why we're here. You're here to help a killer. We all took part, we all did it. <clears throat> He's the murderer. He killed Mickey Day. He hit him on the head with an oar. Didn't you? <clears throat> Didn't you? Yes! <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me show. <laughs> you ill? And that can make you desperate. Things can get confused. I'm not ill. I'm dying. We're all going to die. What do you know about it? I know that it's wrong to take someone's life. That however they treated you, Paul Cochran, James Lutton, they had a right to live. We were your mates. Mates look out for each other. You didn't nothing to help me when I was humiliated. Do you know why? Because that was normal. You humiliated me all the time we were together. <laughs> I still thought we were the guys. For good sake, we killed a guy. That wasn't for me, that was for Paul. You killed that guy and it was wrong. Well, we were all supposed to go along with it. Like always. Why did you go along with it, Vince? Habit made me feel small and, and nothing, because I was nothing. But then I found out I was dying. When, when you die, see them, the people that know you, they tell stories about you. But what would my friends say about me, huh? Butter the jokes? <laughs> the humiliated one? Let him go, Bar. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. Stay Ooh, back. Go for him, boss. I'm a special person. Scum comes along and destroys it all. Drop it, Bob. Come on. Drop it. Drop it.
You're right. Fine. Flipper. Your secret's safe with me. I don't have any secrets from you. I think it is. It's violent. You've had enough lessons in violence. Violence lessons? That's good. You going for grade four? Morning. Oh, yeah. Tom wants to start karate. I've said it's too violent. Judo, then. That's the one. Yeah? Self-defence. Yeah, OK. Yeah? Right. OK. Busby's fine. We can charge him today. Hollandsworth won't make sentencing. He's only got a couple of months left, according to his consultant. How do you feel? Me. Half man, half fish. Never felt better. First slipper, everyone! Yeah. Yeah.